Hey guys, it's Rick with the HD Vibe channel. Hey, I'm in the uh, Harley garage today and I want to talk to you a little bit about the San Diego Customs uh, Pro Series Touring Seats by Saddleman that I installed uh, a, a little while ago and want to give you some of my initial impressions. But before we get into that, uh, if you've been here before, thanks for stopping back by and I appreciate you uh, checking out these, these videos. And if this is your first time, uh, welcome, and I appreciate you also coming by and, and checking out this video. And if you will, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do hit that subscribe button. Um, it helps the channel out tremendously so that, and also helps the YouTube algorithm to push this content out to others that might be interested uh, so that they can more easily find it. Also, please uh, like this uh, video, hit the thumbs up for a like, and I think most importantly, um, Leave some comments um, because I will respond to every comment. I think people have ideas and thoughts. And, and really, me doing this impression video came from a comment on a prior video of asking, hey, how's the seat going? It's been a month or so since you put it on. What do you think? So that is, is you know, the comments drive content, and I appreciate that. And also hit that bell icon to get notified when I do put out a new video. So again, we're going to talk about the San Diego Customs Saddleman seat that I have on the 2019 Road King Special um, and give you some of my impressions. And ultimately, I think most importantly is, would I buy this seat again? And we'll get into that right after this. <laughs> Okay guys, we're back. So let's talk about this San Diego Customs Pro Series Touring Seat by Saddleman. Um, this seat, as I said, I got this uh, a month or so ago. I've had the opportunity to put some seat time in, put some miles on it. I've actually even ridden it on the 2019 Street uh, Road King Special as well as I switched it over to the 2015 Street Glide Special. So obviously it's a touring seat the seat setups are the same, so I can actually switch this seat between the two. Um, so it's good from that perspective. That's not unique to this seat, but any, any touring seat that's built for these motorcycles, you could do that with. But, so let's talk about, um, I think, the comfort of the seat. Was there a break-in period? Um, other thoughts, and then ultimately, would I buy this seat again? So. A little bit about the seat, um, it obviously is, it's very narrow in through the frame. Um, so that allows you to get your feet closer, your legs closer into the, the body of the bike, as well as get your feet more firmly planted on the ground at, at a stopping point. Um, so just for reference, I, I'm pretty average height, I'm 5'10". My inseam is about 31 and a half or 32. Obviously a little bit longer when I'm wearing riding boots, but if I have flat uh, heeled shoes, I'm about 32 inseam. Um, so I'm not a super tall guy, but I'm not super short. But I will say when I stand uh, with the bike at a stoplight, I'm probably about this much up off the seat. Um, so in addition to being narrow through here, it is very low and, and fits the to very close to the frame of the bike as well. Um, it, it's not real wide in through here, as you can see. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that relative to the comfort level. It does have the diamond um, stitching on it. This seat, um, I got the black um, saddleman emblem here. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. But they all come with the white San Diego custom emblem. This is, I don't know if it's an option, but it's a different setup um, to get the backrest. I preferred the backrest because I wanted to try that out. I've never ridden with a backrest before. Um, so that is, it does add a little additional cost to this seat. Um, it is, uh, again, does have this almost like the step up, settlement step up seat um, configuration or even I've seen Lucky Dave seats um, that have been reviewed that's very similar. Although this is not quite as 
Um, it's not a right angle, not a 90 degree bend here like on the step up seems to be. So I kind of liked at least that from a look. So from an aesthetics perspective, this seat works, I think, really well with this blacked out bike or even my, my Street Glide Special is silver. Um, I like the look. I've actually had um, on some rides I've done where I've had the seat on either one of the bikes, I've had multiple people come up to me and say, hey, what do you think about that San Diego custom seat? So, um, you know, I've, I've given them my honest views at the point with which they ran across me. Sometimes it was very early on. Um, and so we're gonna, we'll get into that. But, you know, from an aesthetics perspective, this seat looks awesome on this bike as well as the Street Glide Special. It is very lean, it is very slim, it is very low. I think in the profile and even with the backrest, even though a lot of people say the backrest is for old men, um, I like it. Um, it's not that big, fat, wide backrest that you may see on some Harleys, but it, it does provide a level of comfort. Now, as far as, again, for me at 510, um, this seat works great from a, a seat positioning perspective. Um, it does, with the backrest, I would say it does push me a little bit forward, which I am fine with that. Again, I, I don't have the longest of arms, and, I, and I'll uh, link a card here to the, the previous video I did on this initially, so you guys can go back and see that as well. But I'm not a real tall guy, um, so pushing me forward a little bit would be fine. I would say if you are on the taller, if you're six foot, six foot one, I would probably suggest not using the backrest because it does, as you can see, it, it pushes you up forward maybe half an inch. And as you move this backrest up, it goes more forward. So it's, it's even gonna push you more forward uh, positioning on your seat when you're riding. I actually ride with it down all the time, uh, but there is a, a pin that came with it that will actually um, hold that up in the, the higher positions. I would say if you were riding on highway for, for, you know, six, seven, eight hour ride on the highway with this seat, probably raising it up would be more comfortable as it would give you, uh, you know, straighten your back and give you more support back there. So that's, I haven't personally done that, so I can't, can't attest to what that is. I'm just, um, have a theory that that would be the case. So, a little bit of the technology in this seat. So it does have a gripper back here uh, on this section. It has gripper on here. So it does hold you in the seat. You're not sliding around, but that doesn't preclude you from actually moving in the seat if you are, again, if you're doing some slow speed maneuvering, you need to shift weight, you need to counterbalance, etc. You can still do that on this seat, but if you are getting into the throttle, and you're gonna go fast, you're not gonna slide up and out of this seat because it, it, the gripper will hold. Um, like I said, so far it's been a month or a month and a half since I've had this on and the gripper is still a little, it's still sticky. Um, you can still feel it there. Um, it does sort of have a, a carbon fiber look to the diamond stitching and I'll, I'll show you some um, sort of views of, different views of the seat as we're kind of going through this. Um, but it's very, again, a very aesthetically pleasing. Now, from a technology standpoint, again, this does have gel-infused technology into, I believe, just the rider portion of the seat and not the pillion. Um, and I will say a lot of people talk about how some seats, and even saddleman seats, take some time to break in. I will tell you from the moment I put the seat on, it didn't feel uncomfortable. It didn't feel overly stiff. Um, and so I think part of that is the gel technology that's moved in or that is incorporated into the seat. It actually, the Saddleman website, I believe, says it reduces vibration from the motorcycle by 50%. Um, and the jarring effect of hitting potholes and expansion joints by 92%. I don't know how you measure those percentages, um, but I will tell you from my personal experience, really no break-in period. It's been super comfortable. I've ridden this with the seat on hour-long jaunts. I've ridden this seat on three-hour long rides. 
with minimal stops just for fuel. Um, and it's very comfortable. And I've also ridden it in under conditions on doing coursework, slow speed maneuvers. Um, and it works well for that as well. I, I had no issues and I think part of it is, again, the seat is so narrow. You can really feel as though you're sitting in the bike, you're part of the bike and not sitting on top of the bike. Some of the seats, I have a hammock seat for, for longer touring. Those you kind of feel like you're sitting on top of the seat. Um, and I will say even the stock seat was, was better. It was a lower profile than a hammock seat or uh, an ultra limited seat, which I also have when I do two up. But this seat I think fits the bill for certainly short rides. It's good for slow speed maneuvering. And I would say medium distance rides. I don't know that I would go on a long, long distance ride, but then again, I mean, some people go on long rides with the stock seats that come on the Road King Special or the Street Glide Special, and I've done that in the past, and you know, it's fine. In the previous video, I did mention that I was having some tailbone issues, and that was one of the drivers for me actually changing out the seats on both of the, the touring bikes that I have um, and, and getting this one. Um, I have a different brand. I have a Danny Gray custom seat on the Street Glide Special. Um, but I will tell you that I was having tailbone issues, um, I think as a result of riding on the stock seats that were probably getting broke down. And primarily on the Street Glide Special, that one had you know 20, almost 30,000 miles of riding on it, um, several years, um, some long trips on it. And I think you know from a pan construction perspective, the, if you've taken your seat off a stock seat off of a Harley Davidson touring bike, they're very flexible plastic that, that the pan is set on. This one, I don't know if it's fiberglass, but it's certainly, if it's plastic, it is a plastic that doesn't flex very much. It's very solid. So you're not getting that compression or that, that sag in that, in that seat. And once the foam breaks down, I believe, my theory, once the foam breaks down on the stock seats, then you're really getting down to the pan that's holding you up. And if that pan has a lot of flex, that seat is just gonna continue to break down uh, and stretch. Um, which I don't believe that will happen with the seat. Obviously, I haven't had it very long, uh, but I think Saddleman Seats has a great reputation in the industry for, for uh, putting out uh, very comfortable seats uh, and very long lasting seats. And I anticipate, given that this has that, that very stiff pan um, and the gel technology, this will be good for, for the long term. Now on the con side, uh, relative to this seat, I will say if you are gonna ride with a passenger, this is not gonna cut it. Um, especially if you have this backrest, you literally have, I would say, seven to eight inches of space from the front to the rear of the pillion seat. And it is about maybe six or seven inches wide at the widest point in the rear. So it's not going to be comfortable. So if you're planning on having somebody, your lady ride on the back of this seat or a passenger or a child, it's not going to be comfortable for the long haul. Um, I will say an emergency situation, if you had to put somebody on there, it's there, you can use it. Um, but it is, again, it's very, very low profile. Um, it's really not, in my mind, meant for having a passenger ride on the back of that seat for very long more sort of as an emergency situation if something would come up would be my suggestion. Um, I know I, I, don't, I wouldn't put anybody on the back of that seat for, for any amount of time. But from a driver's perspective, um, it's very comfortable. Um, I think the technology that San Diego Customs has put into this um, is unbelievable. Like I said, out of the box, um, not much break in, it was, it was very comfortable. You'll, you'll see on the original video if you go back and check that out. When I first sat on it, I could tell it was not gonna be much of a break in, if any. And, and I don't know that it's really broken in. Maybe, um, you know, I probably have close to a thousand miles on this seat now, and uh, it, it's very comfortable. Um, and as I said, I've done longer trips, I've done shorter trips, I've done commuting, I've done slow speed skills work with it. Um, and, and, and performs very well in all those circumstances. So let's get into, I think the ultimate question would be, would I buy this again? Um, it's expensive. 
There's no question. This is probably one of the more expensive seats that you can get from Saddleman. It is, I think, the design by San Diego Customs. I believe it's built by Saddleman. The cost, the, the list price that Saddleman has this at is $660. I bought it from West End Motorsports. Um, and they had it at the list price, which everyone does. But when it went into my cart, I believe they actually discounted by, I think, 5 to or 10%. Um, and if it was over $99, it was free shipping. And I know Get Lowered Cycles also um, advertises this seat. They sell that on their website as well. I don't know if they give some sort of a discount. I think maybe that might be a general practice among the resellers of these seats. They'll give you a little bit of a discount. But I will say you can also order this directly from Saddleman. Now, the downside is, at least right now, in, in fall of 2021, this seat took, I would say, about five to six weeks before I actually got it. Um, and part of that is, Saddleman states that they individually make each seat so they don't mass produce a bunch of them and have them sitting in an inventory. So I think from their perspective, if I think about it from business perspective, it's sort of just in time. But that lead time before, by the time you place the order till you get it, it, it takes a while, at least right now. I don't know if that's re related to all that's going on in the world, whether it be supply chain issues, pandemic, shutdowns, or whatever the case may be. We're through a lot of that, but supply chain issues I know are, are challenging for a lot of companies right now. So maybe that has something to do with it. But I will say, if, if you do want to customize this seat a little bit more, I would suggest ordering it directly from Saddleman because you do have options on this Saddleman logo can be in a different color. Um, I think they offer, you know, the basic colors, but something that'll coordinate with your, your bike. I obviously, this is black. If it's a black bike. It works well. If I put on the street glide, it's sort of black and silver. The black works fine. The diamond stitch that's on the seat and on the pillion and on the, the back here, I think you can customize that, that stitching as well to your liking. Um, and the only thing I think you cannot change or customize is a San Diego Customs um, logo. It, it's sort of a rubberized logo and I think it's black and white and that's the way I've always seen all of them. Um, so, and then the other thing I forgot to mention, I think, is this does come out and if you want to ride without it, there's actually a San Diego Custom patch that Velcros into the space, the slot, so you don't have an open slot going in there. So again, getting back to would I purchase this again? Um, I think absolutely. It, it was a pretty major investment for, for myself um, to get this seat as I think it would be for anyone. Um, you know, at 600 plus dollars with this backrest. I think if you get it without the backrest, it's in the 540, 550, 560 range for the touring bikes. They also do make this seat, I think, for the um, the soft tail line, I think the Dynas you can get it for, etc. Um, but obviously check Saddleman's website to see what you can get it for. But certainly the touring touring line, you can get it. Um, again, would I buy this again? I think absolutely. Um, you know, I think this seat is very quality built. Um, the technology that goes into it, the comfort level, um, you know. The value I think you get from all of that relative to the price to me is worth it. And I think, you know, this seat will last, my opinion, I think a lot longer than a stock seat from Harley Davidson. Um, so I think you're going to get a lot more years of riding out of it. And, um, you know, from a comfort level perspective, uh, it's night and day. Like I said, I was having tailbone issues when I was riding with the stock Harley Davidson seats. And I'm not getting that, that issue anymore. Um, you know, I don't know if it's something that healed up, but I was getting it consistently while I was riding on the stock seats, uh, on the stock Harley Davidson seats, and it, it was it was shortening my ride, or it was making the ride much less um, enjoyable. Which I ride motorbikes, motorcycles for the enjoyment to get out, to relax, and it wasn't relaxing anymore. So this has helped me tremendously in getting back to that. So if you would, again. Please drop any comments in the comment section below. 
I'd be happy to hear about your experiences with this seat or if you have any questions about my experiences, um, where I purchased it, uh, I'll put links in the description to Weston uh, Motorsports. Um, those guys have been, they were great. They kept me in the loop the entire time as I was going through. Um, I'll put a link to the Saddleman uh, website as well to this seat. Um, like I said, if you want to customize, that's probably the way to go. So with that, I'll stop it here and I'm going to leave you with this. Life is short. Get out and ride the bike and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for stopping by.